There are some diseases we use as euphemisms because they're extinct, right? No, they're not. So today, let's go over the top five diseases you thought were extinct but are still floating around more than you'd think. Thanks for clicking the video and checking out Informal History. My name's Adam, and let's go ahead and talk about some diseases you thought were extinct because, well, so did I, including number five, poliovirus. Now, poliovirus is a bacterial infection or an infection that can be caused by bacteria. And it turns out that if you have polio, it's really not that bad for most of you because 75% of people who have poliovirus are asymptomatic. They don't even know. And for the rest of you, the other 24%, we'll get to the 1% in a second, it's sore throat, a fever, goes away in one to two weeks, completely treatable, and really not that big of a deal. But for 1%, paralysis, maybe forever, to the point where you have to go in one of these things, which is called an iron lung, in order just to survive, because your lungs won't work without it. There are a lot of writings from hundreds of years, over a thousand years back, talking about what is poliovirus, or we assume to be poliovirus. So of course, this has been around for a long time, and we saw an epidemic, or we read about it like it was an epidemic in the 50s and 60s. And that's when we started to develop vaccines. I'm vaccinated, and I bet you, you are too. It's just something that we do when we're babies, and get into a toddlerhood, that's a word. For good reason. I like using both of my legs and my lungs without assistance, and I'm sure you do too. So because of vaccines, which were started to being created in 1950, 1952, and then the one in 1955 that was released in 1955 is the most similar to the one that we get today. So we're talking about, we're going on 68 years. We're going on 68 years that this has been mass available, or there, there's been mass availability, I should say. In 1988, there was roughly 350,000 new cases in the year 1988 worldwide. In 2022, take a guess. Let me know in the comments section right now, how many cases in 2022 of poliovirus do you think there were? The answer is 30, around 30. And we're talking about in two countries, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And that's just simply because, well, there was a issue where the FBI ran a trial for vaccinating against hepatitis, which turned out to be fake, and the entire operation was just to catch Osama bin Laden. And this is in 2011. So there's a little bit of vaccine hesitancy in these parts of the world, and the Taliban actually outright banned people going from house to house to vaccinate, and this was only a few years ago. Since then, vaccination rates are rising again, but really it's only in two countries that we see poliovirus in the wild. Number four, consumption, which is now what we call tuberculosis or TB. Now, I read a lot about history. I love history, which is why I started this channel in the first place. Thanks for hitting subscribe. We're gonna do lots of videos like this and creepy stuff and all sorts of stuff. Either way, I think it's really cool that Although we read about consumption like it was the worst thing in the world, and really it kind of was at the time, people getting this respiratory illness, which is gonna cause them to cough up blood, be short of breath, just terrible, terrible sickness that killed a lot of people. But now we almost never hear about it, especially here in North America and Europe. In the developed world, you really don't see it that much. Now, of course, there is tuberculosis still floating around the world. And last year, there was 1.3 million deaths in 10.6 million cases. These are estimates, of course, of tuberculosis. Now, of course, we do things to mitigate this. It's spread in similar ways that a cough, a cold, a flu would spread. So if I spit and the droplets get in your face and your orifices, things like that. So back in the day, I mean, none of you remember because everyone is dead from that bygone era, but there were things like spittoons everywhere. Everyone had chewing tobacco and there'd be spittoons literally everywhere for people just to spit. Spitting on the sidewalk, we don't really do that anymore. And one of the reasons spittoons were taken out of saloons and bars and places where they go shopping, movie theaters, is so that people wouldn't spit anymore to calm down tuberculosis. Now in the world, it's estimated that five to 10% of Americans actually will test positive for tuberculosis. But it turns out that just like polio virus, just because you have it doesn't mean you're gonna have symptoms. In parts of Asia, up to 80% of people tested are gonna have tuberculosis or test positive. So it just depends. I mean, if you're asymptomatic, no big deal. If you're not asymptomatic, well, I mean, we can treat it now, but otherwise without treatment, you're probably gonna die. Number three, scarlet fever. Now scarlet fever to me sounded like something that you'd read in a, a novel from the 1700s. No, this is something that's very prevalent still. 
This is something that really is mostly uh, kids, children that get scarlet fever. And all it is, if you get strep throat, it can progress into scarlet fever. And this is gonna be sore throats, it's gonna be a fever, things like that. And if left untreated, it can be fatal. And that's because it progresses to attack your kidneys, your heart, your lungs, things like that. So just make sure you get it treated and you're probably gonna be okay. And the chances of you getting it as an adult are really, really slim. About five in a thousand children worldwide are going to get scarlet fever at some point in their childhood, but it's okay. Because back in the day, 15 to 20% of people who got scarlet fever are gonna die. Now it's less than 1% and it's thought that that less than 1% basically it goes untreated. So if you treat it, you're good to go. I mean, it's gonna be a little uncomfortable, but so is strep throat, so is having a flu. It is what it is. So of everything on the list, this is definitely the most common one, being that five of a thousand children sometime in their life are going to get it, but it's okay because it's probably the least deadly one on the list. Number two, this is the one that shocked me. Rickets? Really? Rickets. This is something that you'd use Oh, well, that's older than rickets. And all rickets is, is basically a vitamin D deficiency, a very severe vitamin D deficiency. That's basically it. So it can cause, imagine uh, metabolic bone disease in reptiles. I mean, that's how I would liken it. You're having issues with soft joints, soft bones. Sometimes your joints are gonna be malformed or bulbous. Your bones aren't forming properly. Now this used to be called King's disease because royals back in the day would stay inside, right? Pale skin was something that was very sought after because if you had pale skin, it means that you weren't a peasant out in the field. It's funny now that we glamorize orange skin and people who do tanning products. A lot of reason that it's coming back so prevalently is kids spend way less time outside. When I was a kid, I was outside constantly. That's all I did. I rode my bike, went and played you know, basketball with my friends, whatever. Now everyone's on an iPad. So if there's a, any better reason than don't rot your child's brain, let them go outside and play. Otherwise they might get rickets. Of course, this is very not common, not very common. 200,000 cases in the developed world every year. So it's not really something that is well established, but the numbers are actually going up rather than down. And for number one, I wanna take you out of this room to Southeast Asia, where I actually got to go see a colony of people who have this disease. The only way to explain number one, which is leprosy, is to come to a place that was built for lepers, which is what they're called here in Bali. I'm in Bali, Indonesia, and this entire colony was just that. It was a colony built by the Balinese government for people with leprosy. And the people who moved in decided, I don't want to live here. I don't want to live in a place that was designed for people that have leprosy. I don't want to be an outcast living in a place that was built for something that basically doesn't exist. 208,000 people have this disease and mostly in Asia and Africa. And here we are in Southeast Asia and I'm about to show you something that you'll never even believe. This entire area no longer has inhabitants at all. It was completely abandoned. And as you can see, it looks like it was outfitted. It has these little bungalows that were made of concrete and they have doors and a lot of them have windows still. But there's one lady who has leprosy who still lives here by herself with nobody else. And it's a sad story, but I haven't seen her yet. And I want you to see what it's like to come upon somebody with a disease that no longer exists in most of the rest of the world. So let's go meet somebody who is the last of a dying breed. many incredible things and been able to travel many different places, but I've never seen anything like this. Government housing, which is what it were, and we don't know how long it's been like this. We don't know how long this lady's lived here, but leprosy in a nutshell, it can take your limbs, it can take your teeth, the inside of your nose lining. It basically destroys your body very, very slowly. And now we don't really have a lot of it and treatment is available if you get it early enough and it's very effective, but if you're in a place like Bali, especially this lady, uh, we don't know exactly how old she is, but it appears as though she might have preceded all of what is available now in terms of medical care. So having a diagnosis early was probably not an option. 
uh, the diagnosis, even if it was an option, maybe there was no proper medical care. So you'd have to think something like this, uh, leprosy, which is almost extinct around the world, doesn't have the best care in a world that I wouldn't want to call a third world country or a developing country, but definitely a country that doesn't have the same resources as somewhere like Canada or the US. And it's a very humbling experience. And to meet this woman and she's excited to be in front of the camera and tell her story through a translator and explain what's going on. And it's a moving thing. And uh, leprosy, it's almost extinct, but we're not quite there yet. So there you go. Not a lot of people have leprosy anymore. It's not totally understood why it's gone down so much. I mean, living conditions is what they suggest. And it was basically gone from Europe around 1600. It started to really, really dwindle between 1400 and 1600. So we don't really know why. At the end of the day, it's a very scary one. I'm really glad I got to go see that colony. And that colony was basically wiped out. All those buildings that you see there, it was wiped out weeks after we left Bali. So there you go, five diseases you thought were extinct, but actually aren't. Please let me know in the comments section, did you know any of these? Is should we do a part two? What kind of videos do you wanna see on this channel? I get all the video ideas from you guys, the viewers, and because it's a new channel, let's mold it the way that you wanna see it. Please hit like, please hit subscribe, brand new channel, really helps out if you just click those buttons. And that's it, that means that I'll see you next week.